Thank God for the grace to save the rich like I am. I like to change that and say, thank God for the grace to change me out of being a wreck into being a saint. We, we get, so that's what I do when I sing that song. Yes, I was a wreck, I was a wretch, and I was everything, but now I'm everything that God says I am. And the Bible says, if you've been born again, you are a new creation. Old things, old things are passed away, all things have become new. Now we have to accept that by faith. Now, everybody turn this thing upside down. This is how the devil wants you to see yourself. Everybody see that? And if that's the image you have of yourself, you're just miserable, that's all I can say. Because that's what I've seen. I saw myself, how many really seen themselves like that a lot of times in your early Christian life? Man, I, that was me. That was me right there. But then I found out that God did a great work on the cross and this is the way I see myself now. Now, now that don't mean that we go around full of pride and arrogance. That means we, we go around with a heart of thanksgiving of what the Lord has done. Amen? Amen. All right. So that's where we're coming from tonight. We want to see, we want to make sure that we're preaching on this side of the cross, the resurrected side. Okay. So when you read scriptures, you're, you're going to see that in, in the word of God. And I want you to uh, turn to, if you will, and you put on the board, put uh, Romans 8, 2 first. Romans 8, 2. And uh, look at that scripture. Now, I want to take my time and we want to see what's in these scriptures. Now, notice what it says. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, how many of you know that God put us all in Christ Jesus? We are in Christ Jesus. All right. The law of our new being has freed me from the law of sin and of death. So sin shall not have dominion over us. Uh, put this scripture up there that we had a while ago in, in Romans six eighteen. Six eighteen, and having been set free from sin, so now you got to see. This is where the Bible says you'll be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. In other words, we see things different now as we study the scriptures and we see what the Lord has done at Calvary for us, and we have to accept that by faith, because. Uh, when we first come to the Lord, we've, done, we've all done ugly stuff. Ain't one sinner greater than the other. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we all have been what? Justified by the one man, Jesus Christ. So we don't want to get hung up. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, there's a lot of people in that condition. So we want to bring them out of that condition into the condition of being a new creation in Christ according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Okay? But, if, but as you are in Christ now, if you see yourself in the old Adam and you're still practicing the old Adam stuff, then you're going to be miserable. See? So you've got to realize that God took us out of Adam, crucified Adam, and crucified the Adam in us at the cross. Now, I'm not saying that we can't sin. You can sin anytime you choose to. But we don't have to sin, but we've been set free from the law of sin and death. Now, we've got to see that. Accept that and begin to praise God for it. Now, the Holy Spirit has the responsibility to work the, the, the power of that into our spirit and into our soul. And it's just like, well, for example, you take an aspirin. You know, you've got a tremendous headache. You take an aspirin. You don't understand. The only thing you know is that you took it and then it begins to work in there. And all of a sudden, it does whatever it does. <laughs> and the headache goes. And that's the way the Word of God is. The Word of God says it's a medicine even to our flesh. So we, we take the Word in. We read it every day, just like you eat food every day. Uh, or, or do you? 
Yeah, I, I can tell most of us have uh, been eating food. Uh, you drink water every day. You, you need to eat the Word every day. You, 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 how many do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, how many takes a bath once a week? <laughs> oh, uh, what, who said once a month? <laughs> you can sit over there. <laughs> Because see, see, the Word of God has a washing effect. How many of you know that? See? So we need to get into that habit of, of, of just read a chapter. Read Ephesians. I mean, it's, it's exciting. So you need to see yourself free tonight. You need to see yourself uh, as we have this right here. Because we are, that is, the body of Christ is the bride of Christ. He is not coming for that. He don't deserve that. No, he's coming for this. And that's who we are. See? Okay? Now, you know where I'm heading. So let's get into the Word of God and just eat the Word of God real good here tonight. All right. I want you to turn to the next chapter. Is the next verse, I'm sorry. In chapter uh, 3, verse uh, 24. Look at verse 24 now. We're just going to eat this tonight and drink it. All are justified and made upright in the right standing with God. This is the Amplified Bible. Who's that all? Raise your hand if, if you're included in that. Yeah, you're a Christian? That's a, we are justified. Meaning just as if we have never sinned. Oh my goodness, you, uh, just accept it. Just receive it. Yeah, but you know, I, I did last week. I remember last week I fussed at my wife. What? That's a habit. That ain't who you are. You're a new creature in Christ. But if you did fuss at your wife, what would you do? First John. Huh? First John one yeah, there you go. You'd say, honey, I'm sorry. Now, you know, I'm almost 84 on my next birthday. And I know I look more like 39, but anyway. <laughs> Who said 94? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> I lost my thought. <laughs> uh, if I can get you laughing, that's going to be, I mean, la laughter is better than a medicine, you know. That's what some of us do, just need to laugh. Yes. Just laugh. Because yes. we win. That's right. Devil, we win. <laughs> he, he, he don't know it yet, but we win. We've already won. We won at Calvary. The Lord won our victories for us. So we have to accept it and receive it and get excited about it and thank him for it. Now what's going to happen is you're, you're going to become thankful. You see, a thankful person, which is a condition of the heart, worships God. You cannot help from worshiping God when you have such appreciation in your heart for the food you eat, for your house, for your children, for being born in America, uh, about all the blessings that we have. As you meditate on all that and begin to give God praise and, and, and thank Him for all of those things, that conditions your heart. And it becomes a thankful heart. And then you begin to worship God. And as you worship God, you're drawing nigh to God. And what happens? He draws nigh to you. Oh, my goodness. People say, How, you seem to be so close to God. I know. I just worship the Lord all the time. I'm riding my tractor, cutting grass out there. I'm praising God. I'm speaking in tongues. I'm hollering hallelujah. And I guess people in those apartments look over there and figure, what in the world is wrong with him? I'm saved, saved, saved. <laughs> See, that's what it does. You, you can't muster it up. You, you can't manufacture it. I know we've all tried to, we've probably fake it every once in a while, you know, we want people to think we, you know. But see, this is what God does. Now, now look at here, look at this. Uh, I want you to turn, let's, let's finish reading that, let's finish that. Look what it says. All are justified and made upright in the right standing with God, freely and graciously, by his grace, his unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption, notice, which is provided in Christ Jesus. 
Everything we need has been provided for us in Christ Jesus. Now, see, we nail that down. Now, I want to come over here to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 1.30. That's a long one, isn't it? That's a biggie. Okay, First Corinthians one thirty. Look at that one now. I'm breaking in this new Bible. Now, but it is from Him that you have your life in Christ Jesus. Now, let's break that down. It's but it's from God that you have your life in Christ Jesus. We have to give God the glory. Look, whom God made our wisdom. Christ has made Christ to be our wisdom. From God. Revealed to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation previously hidden manifesting itself as our righteousness, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God and our consecration, making us pure and holy and our redemption, providing our ransom from eternal penalty for sin. That's why you can't work for your salvation. You have to accept it by faith. Christ did it. God, through Christ, it was God in Christ reconciling us back to himself. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit reveals to us that we were lost, but he reveals to us that, the, that God has provided salvation for us through what Christ did at Calvary. And then we accept it by faith and ask the Lord to come into our heart and save us. And he does. And we confess with our mouth that he is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you're saved. But it's a work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, that's where people don't, don't understand that a divine work has been done in all of our hearts that are Christians. It's done by the Holy Spirit. Okay? All right, so because of God that we are in Christ. Now, put up the next verse. Verse 31. So then, as it is written, let him who boasts and proudly rejoices and glories, boast and proudly rejoices and glory in the Lord. In other words, we have nothing to boast about that I, I well, look what I've done, I'm saved. I saved myself because I've been a good boy. I've done all these good works. I belong to the first uh, Redemption Baptist Church on the first corner of the first street of the first town. No. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. He provided salvation and redemption for us and reveal to us our condition by his spirit. And we cried out to the Lord and accepted his provision. As we received Christ, we received his provision and became a child of God. And the Holy Spirit did the work in us and changed our spirit, which was dead towards God, made it alive. And now we say, Abba Father, Abba Father. A work of the Holy Spirit. It's God that did it. He put us in Christ. Now, go over to First Corinthians. Uh, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians five seventeen. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Put that on the board. And this substantiate what I'm saying. And you can check all this out in the Word of God. All right. Therefore. Therefore, we'll always find out, therefore, well, what does that mean? <laughs> what, what does that mean? Therefore, because all I just, what I just said, if any person is engrafted in Christ, 
the Messiah, he is a new creation. Now we want to remember, we all still have our same bodies. Your body has not been saved yet. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that some of us are getting older? How can you tell? <laughs> are anybody getting younger in here? <laughs> no, you ain't. Put your hand down. <laughs> I got news for you, son. <laughs> but I got some good news. He's going to provide a brand new body one day. Our spirits are saved. Now listen to this. Absent from the body. Everybody listen. Absent from the body. What, what's absent from the body? Huh? Our spirit. We're spirit beings. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. So I'm going to a funeral. I'm going to be speaking at a funeral Friday. Uh, one of my uh, old... Buddies, long time ago, I, I met him when I was 12 years old, and he was 12 years old, and we went in the Air Force together, and we did a lot of things when we were kids together, and he's, he's with the Lord. But his body is going to go to the ground, but one day his body will be resurrected, his spirit will come back, unite in a glorified body, and he will have a glorified body one day. Every Christian will have a glorified body. But so it's our spirit is saved now. And uh, these bodies are still subject. People say, well, why do people get sick? Because these bodies are still subject to sickness because of the fall of Adam. Okay? So we understand that. But we are new creatures in Christ. And look what it says. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition, which was dead, has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Now that's what we want to concentrate on. The new. Okay? The old has passed away. The old died with Christ was resurrected with Christ now. We're new creatures in Christ. Now look what it says, the next verse. Go to the next verse. This, this, this is uh, awesome here. I just love to teach on this. All, but all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. Now, what do you mean reconcile? That means he's made, a, he's, friend, he, he's made us friendly to him. He's not mad at us no more. He's not mad at us. He's reconciled us. He reconciled us. Not your pastor. Not the church building. Not a bunch of laws. He did it by his spirit. And Christ paid for it at the cross. I owed a debt that I could not pay. And he paid a debt that he didn't know because he loved us. Look what it says. Reconciles us to himself. Let's just say you're mad at me, okay? Uh, look, show everybody that. <laughs> and, 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 God, and, and I just come to you and say, come on, son. We, uh, come on, we're going to be buddies. Friends, we we friends now. Yeah, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Just listen, we're, I, I'm reconciling you back to myself. We yes, friends, okay? Yes, In fact, I'm going to take you home, and I tell you what, the wife's got a steak dinner ready. <laughs> and uh, I like reconciliation. Ice, ice cream and, and, and just lemon pie. Okay. Okay. And I think she says she's going to have some mashed potatoes and butter Ooh. beans. Huh? Okay, you can sit down now. Oh, man. Now. <laughs> Now, we're friends again. We're friends. I ain't mad at you. God ain't mad at you no more. Get over it. Come on, church. Get over it. God is for you. It says in the book of Hebrews, I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. Gosh, two times is enough, but he said it three times. And I'll never leave you. The best friend you have is your heavenly father in heaven. 
We've been reconciled, made friendly again with God. He did it for us. And we just accept it and get happy and meditate on it. And all of a sudden, that appreciation just rises up in your heart. Oh, my goodness. Now, you're doing pretty good. But, 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 but you fuss at your wife all of a sudden. You, you ever seen anybody growl? You know, she says, you know, keep saying something. And you go, <clears throat> Anybody ever done that? <laughs> oh, you women do that too? <laughs> she said, that, that's new. That, I like you. That's news to me. But you know, that's, that's the flesh. And you say, oh God, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. You come under, see, that's where the Holy Spirit lives in you. And he'll let you know that that's a no-no. And then you have to say to your wife, honey, I'm sorry. Have you anybody in here ever had to say I'm sorry to somebody? Let's see your hands. Gosh, that's a <laughs> that's a hundred percent. And now you're right in line. See, that's that's what the Holy Spirit does in us. If we do growl, we 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 say, "Honey, I'm so sorry." Because you know, sometimes there's so much pressure. You know, I used to come home. I worked at the air base years ago, and I was a foreman, and I had colonels on breathing down my neck back here, and rebellious people over here, and I'm trying to get them to do a job, and they, and, they, <laughs> and then you come home, you know, and your wife says, "Come on, honey, sit down in the chair. I'll take your shoes off for you." It, <laughs> Y'all don't do that. <laughs> he does. That's good. He takes his wife's shoes off. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Take, you can switch the rules sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes Susan will get the pen and it will wash my feet. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, honey, I mean, all the nerves, everything just runs out, you know. Oh, my goodness. Then I said, now, what am I going to do for her? <laughs> just behave myself. That's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, let's have a little fun as we get into the Word of God. Because... Uh, We've all been around quite a long time. Look what it says now. <clears throat> Reconciled us to himself. But all things are from God. Notice, who through Jesus Christ. In other words, God through Jesus Christ. He reconciled us back to himself. And we were running as hard as we could. Doing our thing. But he caught up with us. <laughs> I've seen people under guilt running from the Holy Ghost. I say, go ahead and run. Just run all you want. One day. You know, when you love people, and God loves us so much, He just runs after us. He says, you're mine. My son paid a price for you. I bought you with the blood of my son. And you could get cranky and anky and danky if you want to. But you ain't going to outrun God. He has a way of bringing us to where we need to be to say, yes, Lord. I surrender all. Oh, I remember in the Baptist church we used to sing that. I, I surrender all. Then I think, wait a minute, am I know what I'm saying here? <laughs> all, that means everything. A-L-L, is that what you spend that? All, yes. oh my goodness. Yeah, and, that, and see, that's what he does, that work in our heart where we just get so limber and say, Lord, be Lord. And that's where the victory comes in 24-7 as we let him be Lord of our lives. Amen. Look what it says, received us into favor. The favor of God is on us. We are in the favor of God. 
Yeah, but, 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 no, there ain't no buts to it. Look what the word of the Lord said. Received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself. Now that ain't harmony grits. I mean, that is awesome. Peace, harmony, wonderful fellowship. Look what it says. And gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. That by word and deed, we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. So when I go and I give out my tracts, that's what I'm doing. Every person that I see, I have to, I want to bring them into harmony with God. I want to tell them what the Lord has done for them. That's why we preach the gospel. It's the gospel that's the power of God unto salvation. Oh, it don't make sense to the natural mind. The natural mind refuses it. I'm a very intellectual. Oh, I know A, B, C, and what comes after that? But anyway, uh, I know everything. Let me tell you something. When that day comes, you do got about 10 breaths to breathe. <laughs> Let's just see how great you are. Because you fix it. Check out. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Face to face with God at the judgment. It's appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. And the Lord's up there said, Now, son, what was you saying about me now? <clears throat> All your thinking, all your high educated, ungodly thinking. What was you saying, son? Oh, but it would be too late then. But God doesn't want that. That's why I've seen him patient with people that curse him out. And that's what I've learned. I've had people curse me out too. But God did the work in my heart. You can't, make it, you can't make me mad at you because I love you. See, the love of God's been shed in my heart by the Holy Ghost. I had a person one time for one solid year. I think our telephone answering service holds 17 messages. On Wednesday night, I'd go home and I'd have 17 messages on my receiver there telling me how horrible I was as a pastor. For one year, he wrote letters to me, cussed me out, everything. You know what I did? What the word of the Lord said, overcome evil with good. I love that man. I bless him. I bless him. So you can't do that unless God does the work in you. And when God does the work, that's all you can do is bless people. So all you can do is love them. Because you see, that ain't all my life. That's just a little speck of time. What is, that's an ant, that's a mole, that's nothing. I have eternity. My life is bigger than all of that. So you come to that understanding in your life. But that's the work of God that does in us. A year later, he called me up, crying on the phone, repenting. Pastor Bob, I don't know why I did all that. I do. The devil got in him. <laughs> I said, brother, I love you. He cried. He wept. God's Holy Spirit is so awesome. Why does that do it? I know, but I'm not going to tell you. I just want you to repent. And let's get on living for God. Yes, Amen. Amen. Now, let's go to the next verse. There's so much in that that you need to draw out. So we have the ministry of reconciliation. Someone said, what's my ministry? Try to get other people and get them to see that God has reconciled them back to himself. And we go out and we tell them that he ain't mad at you no more. He's provided salvation for you. Next verse. Hello, Rick, are you up there, son? 
There we go. So we are Christ's ambassador. I say, I'm Christ's ambassador. God making his appeal, as it were, through us. Now think about that. When we go and we try to get somebody to receive Christ, it is God in us, God making his appeal to that person through us to get that person and let that person know, God ain't mad at you. He's provided salvation for you. The Bible says that Christ took all of our sins and we'll get to that pretty soon in the next verse. Let's read this. Okay. Make it his appear as it were through us. We as Christ's personal representative, we represent, every one of us as Christians represent Christ, beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. Man, let's let that soak in right there. So we are Christ's ambassador. See, I'm Christ's ambassador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God making his appeal as it were through us. We as Christ's personal representative beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor. There's divine favor waiting for every person out there on this globe. Now offered you and be reconciled to God. By accepting Christ as your personal Savior and letting him, as you receive him, the Bible says in John 1, 12 to 13, it says that God gives us the authority and the power to become sons of God. Now, look at the next verse. 21, verse 5, 21. For our sake, he made Christ. All right, let's, let's make sure we know what we're talking about. For our sake, God made Christ virtually to be sin. That's how much he loved us. Doubt your doubts, but don't doubt God's love. For no greater love that a man can have than for a man to lay down his life for a friend. Who knew no sin, Christ knew no sin, but he became sin with our sins. Look at that. So that in and through him, we might become endowed with and viewed as being in an example of the righteousness of God. What we are to be approved and acceptable in right relationship with him by his goodness. He did it by his grace, his goodness, his mercy. The Bible says, despise thy the goodness of God in Romans 2, 4. Not knowing that it's the goodness of God that leadeth us to repentance. Now here's the way that is. And I love the, the, the love Bible. God took Christ and poured all of our sins into Christ. And Christ became sin with our sins. Then he took all the righteousness of Christ and poured it into us. Now the Bible says our faith is energized by acknowledging all the good things that are in us in Christ Jesus. You, you, well, you, well, Bob, the Bible said there's no good thing in the flesh. Yeah, in the flesh. Flesh ain't, ain't, ain't redeemed yet. Now think for a moment. All the goodness of God that was in Christ, and he is God, was poured into us. So when we acknowledge all the good things that are in us, well, how do we get all those good things? God poured it into us. And so we acknowledge that Christ lives in me. I am righteous with his righteousness. I am holy with his holiness. Oh, that's powerful. Because you see, what happens is the Holy Spirit takes that and he's the one that produces it in us. Someone says, well, I'm, at New Year's, we used to say, well, I'm going to be better next year. <laughs> You're just going to be a better sinner, that's all. 
<laughs> no, no. You're going to have to learn to say, no, God saved me. He reconciled me back to himself. And he is working in me, making me willing to do his good pleasure. Yes. Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1, 6. And now Paul's talking. He says, and I am certain that God, notice this, who began the good work within you. Now, when you acknowledge all that good stuff in you, you're acknowledging all the good things that the Lord has worked within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So every day you need to say, Lord, I thank you that you are, you have begun a good work in me and you will, you God will continue that work in me. Now notice this, and it will manifest itself. Just like a tree, we're talking about the vine in our Sunday school class, the vine. That, that limb is going to have those uh, well, apples. We like apples. How about oranges? <laughs> oh, apple, okay, apples. That tree can't say, I'm going to produce. No, it's just natural. It's just, see, the life in the vine goes into the branch, and then it develops and brings all that fruit forward. So when you let him abide in us, he brings all the fruit for us. In fact, when you read the Bible in uh, Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 22, what does it say? The fruits of the Spirit. <sighs> Let's finish reading that. Continue to, uh, up to the time uh, we read all that. All right, now, did I read that? Yeah, we read that. Okay. Philippians 2.13. At Second Samuel thirteen six. That's Philippians two thirteen. Look what it says. Now, when you read verse twelve, it talks about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And then it says, "But not in your own strength." Notice, for it is God who is all the while effectively at work in you energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Amen. So we can't take no credit for it. So now your faith goes towards God. Just like you put your faith in God to save you when you accepted Christ, now you put your faith in God to change you inside. See, religion changes people from the outside. You train yourself, but it's not from the heart. But when God does the work in us, now we're already saved. We were saved when we trust Christ. But as we walk with the Lord, the Lord, see a lot of people don't realize that God is still working in us and wants to work in his children to make us willing to do his good pleasure. Yes. Amen. And there's times you will make mistakes. That's why he made provision, 1 John 1, 9. If you do sin, God, if you confess that sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Well, now I've got a question. If he's cleansed you from all unrighteousness, what unrighteousness do you have? None. None. You've got to accept it. Because if you say, well, I, no, wait a minute, you're calling God a liar. He said, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you and what? cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So you walk around now God conscious instead of kin, uh, sin conscious. You walk around God conscious and you have that daily fellowship with him and realize that he is doing a work in us. Now some of you might have an area in your life that you need God to work in. 
and say, Lord, you said in your word that you'd work in me, so I'm asking you right now, work in me, work in me, work that, your good pleasure in me. Say, and when God sees that, he'll do that work. That is so powerful to understand that the thing that God has done uh, we don't have much more time, but I want to share just a few more scriptures. Uh, I want you to turn to Jer uh, Jeremiah one twelve up there. Jeremiah one twelve. Then said the Lord to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Now, who performs his work? word? Read that. Hmm? He does. God is watching over his word to perform it. So we say it. We say his word. And he watches over his word. And he will perform it. Okay. So you need to see that. That's very important. That God is active today. Now turn to Psalms 138. Let's start with verse 1. The Bible says he magnifies his word above all his name. Look at there. I will confess and praise you, O God, with my whole heart before the gods. And there's really no gods. They're just, people call them gods, just demons. Will I sing praises to you? Turn to the next verse. Just go to the next verse. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name. Now we worship towards the heavenly temple now in heaven for your loving kindness and for your truth and faithfulness for you have exalted above all else your name and your word and you have magnified your word above all your name. So a person's word or a person's name is only as good as his what? Word. word. So that tells us that God watches over his word to perform it. That way his name stays holy. Amen. Holy is the name of the Lord. So see, God is active today. And when you get involved in all of this and you, you see God working, you see God moving, you see God changing yourself, changing your loved ones and, and different people all around you. You just see God say, the spiritual person is able to sense the things in the spirit. Uh, turn to Ephesians 3.20. And two more and we'll let you go. Now to him who by in consequences of the action of his power. Now notice this. Talking about God's power. That is at work, what? Catch this. Within us. I want you to see God's power working in us. Now let's read that again. Now to him who by in consequences of the action of his power, that is at work within us, notice this, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think intimately beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. So in your mind you say, it can't be done. And here's what you do, I rebuke you, mind. <laughs> so you're either going to believe your mind or you can believe the word of God. That's a choice. You see, because there are some things that, man, it will, you know, your mind will go, what? No, you believe what the word says. Let's read it again. Now to him who by in a consequences of the action of his power, that is at work within us. Say, say that work within me. See, make it personal. He's working in me, working in you. Just think, I'm almost 84 years old. I could tell you things that 
when I got saved, I mean, before I got saved, I drank, I cursed, I spit, and I, you name it, and I'd done it. But then I give my life to Christ, and a lot of things were straightened up right away. Right away, I begin to witness. Right away, I begin to share Christ with people. But there was other things in my life that I wanted to overcome. I remember I, I, I used to smoke a lot. And I learned about reckoning myself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. I would light up a cigarette and say, I'm dead indeed unto this cigarette. <laughs> Blow it right in your face. Oh, you want another shot? <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. And I say, thank God I'm dead indeed under this, saint, I mean, under this cigarette, but I'm alive unto God through Christ. That's in the word of the Lord. I, how many of you know God watches over his word to perform it? In nine months, nine months, I had no more desire to smoke. I tried everything. I remember uh, working at the air base and you had about, uh, you could knock off and go out from the airplane. We worked on airplanes. You couldn't smoke on the airplane. So you walk out here. And I used to tell the guys, it was, it, it, if you worked on the night shift, it was far, far by night, and in the daytime it was, you know, a cloud. And they'd all be out there smoking, be a big, you couldn't see nobody, everybody's smoking out there, see. It's a cloud by day and far by night, okay. But see, I can testify that it works. God worked in me to take that desire out and put his desire in me, according to that scripture right there, and I'm so glad because I'm 84 and I've got good lungs right now. Yes, I can breathe. Amen. Then there was other things the same way. I mean, I sent a lot of people to the moon. Anybody here has ever seen anybody to the moon? <laughs> huh? <laughs> but see, see, I got into the scripture. I learned that now God's going to work in me. And, and get that feeling in me. Now I bless them. I bless them. In fact, put uh, first, um, put first Peter three eight and nine up here, and we'll close on this. And I got so much to share, but I think you've had enough tonight. Just put your faith in God to help you. Whatever situation you may have in your life, you cannot do it on your own strength. And now you're going to learn. See, that's the whole thing, how you learn to, to, to trust God. You learn to walk in his power. You learn to walk in his wisdom. You, you learn, have to learn that. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Finally, all of you. Who's that? That's us. Hey, that's us. Should be of one and the same mind, united in spirit, sympathizing with one another, if they do unto others before they get a chance to do it unto you. Uh, oh, no, I, I, I'm sorry. Loving each other as brothers of one household. He's talking to Christian folks. Talking to us. Compassionate and courteous, tenderhearted and humble. Next verse. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult, scolding, tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare, fair, happiness and protection, and truly pitying and loving them, for know that to this you have been called, that you may yourself inherit a blessing from God, that you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection to yourself and to others. Amen. Somebody comes up and says, I just got to tell you, your breath stinks. Oh, you think yours don't stink either? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What, what, are you, what are you going to do? Huh? What do you feel like doing? Huh? Now you're going to be put to the test. You want a blessing? You bless them. Amen. I've had people in church tell this pastor, go to hell. I said, nope. The Lord save you from that. <laughs> see, when that work is, see, if that work is not done in you, 
Tell me what you're going to do. Hmm? I know what you're going to do. But you see, when you learn to depend upon God's power to, to change you on the inside, because you see, what he says about me, God will judge me. Paul says, you judge me if you want to. I don't even judge myself. My conscience is clear, Paul said. That's not the final word. The final word is God will judge me. Let God judge you. You'll be strong enough in your faith to say, say what you want to say, brother, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bless you. Because if you don't forgive them, you're going to destroy your own self. See, forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for ourselves. And if you let that anger and that resentment build up in you, you in trouble because you're probably going to get sick and you're going to be out of here before your time. Now, I'm not talking about everybody dying uh, early in life. That's the reason why. But a lot of folks die because they have root of bitterness inside of them. And it'll take you out quick. So i like to ask you a question. Are we all clear in here? Huh? If you could think of anybody that, that you'd like to you know, send to the moon, just say, no. I forgive them. I bless them. I bless them. God will judge me. Because his judgments are true. So you can be solid in that. And you can love people. And, and you're going to have people that you're going to be, I don't like to use the word snotty, but everybody knows what that means. And it, oh, what does that mean anyway? You're right, you're right. Just, just being, you know, just, <laughs> see, see, I still got, I'm a country boy and, you know, I'm, Really, uh, not a tuned pastor, but I get my point across. I ain't mad at nobody. I, I got to tell you, are you mad at yourself? How many has been mad at themselves? Yeah, we all have. I ain't mad at myself no more because God's reconciled me. I'm free. And I'm going to stay free because I'm going to bless. Because that's how I get a lot of blessings. Because the Bible says when you bless them, God will bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have showed us that you are doing a work in us. This week, we're going to be conscious of you working in us, making us willing to do your will, Father. And we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the power of the word. We thank you, Father, for what you have done and what you are doing and what you're going to do through us. And we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen.